question. One more question. We cannot see oxygen, yet oxygen is matter. Please explain. Answer. We cannot see it with our eyes, but we can perceive it with our other senses, because oxygen is an effect of motion, and our senses can detect motion in many other ways than seeing them. Our senses are limited, however, for there is much motion in nature which our senses cannot detect unaided. The high vibrations of insect sounds are beyond man's range of hearing, and the bombardment of atoms are likewise beyond it, but we can hear them by electrically amplifying those sounds. Other effects of motion in the in invisible universe of space can be made visible, such as liquef liquefying oxygen or air, or sending an electric current through neon, or the invisible vapors of ben benzene and other organic substances. Question. What happens to make invisible vapors or gases visible? In other words, what relation has expansion and contraction to wave vibrations? Answer. Contraction or compression increases the number of vibrations and shortens their wave dimension by packing them into smaller volume. By thus packing vapors into smaller volume, you increase their activity and thus produce solids which can be more readily sensed. Run an electric current through a neon gas and you can then see it because you increase its vibrations. Condense air and you can see it for the same reason. Converse, conversely, expansion decreases the number of vibrations and causes each wave to occupy larger volume. When a solid is sufficiently expanded, it becomes invisible. It also gradually loses all weight in respect to the gravity of the earth and rises into space to seek pressures equal to its own. When it thus finds an equilibrium of pressure, it will float. A piece of iron will drop to the ground because of its great activity, but it will rise into the air if you expand it into vapors. Question. Please explain further the effect of compression of atoms in relation to their wave frequencies. Answer. The more you contract atoms together, the shorter the distance between each wave and the higher their trials and crest. That means more waves per inch, which means more activity. That means more power to express energy. Question. Could you give an example in nature of how short, wave, short high waves give greater power? Yes. Uh, answer. Yes. Short high waves toss great ships about like corks but long, low waves rock them gently. Question, could you give us an example in nature of how short, high waves give greater heat? Answer, the deeper you penetrate the sun, the greater the compression of long, low waves into short, high ones, hence the greater the heat, according to the cyclic temperature law, which is as follows. Cold generates. Generation contracts. Contraction heats, heat radiates, radiation expands, and expansion cools. Question, why, why should contraction cause heat? Answer, because nature resists contraction by thrusting outward from within as contraction pulls inward from within. Nature thus resists contraction toward activity and assists expansion toward inactivity or stillness, for this universe is founded upon rest and every expression of energy is more strongly resisted as it becomes more strongly expressed. Question. Is this why a piece of iron grows hot and throws off sparks as you file it? Answer yes, and when you stop filing, it cools because it no longer resists your attempt to increase its activities. Question, is there some simple principle back of all this which will enable us to puzzle it out for ourselves? Answer, yes, the simple principle of gravitation and radiation lies back of it all. Gravitation controls contraction into solids, and radiation controls expansion into space, which surrounds these solids. Space and solids are forever interchanging, 
for each is constantly becoming the other. Question. Is there an electrical process back of gravitation and radiation which makes waves into solid matter and then expands them into the gases of space? Answer. Yes. Electricity is divided into its opposite expressions, which we term positive and negative. Positive electricity pulls spirally inward from within to wind up light into an incandescent ball located at the apex of a cone. Negative electricity thrusts spirally outward from within to unwind light into space in the direction of the base of a cone. Positive electricity, gravitation, and contraction are the integration of matter, while negative electricity, radiation, and expansion disintegrates matter into space. Question. Does that mean that light and darkness is merely a question of contraction and expansion? Answer. Yes. Sunlight is the result of contraction into intense motion while the darkness of space is the result of expansion into an almost motionless, very long wave state. Question. What is the spiritual cause of gravitation? I mean by that, why did God create the ideal of gravitation? Answer. Desire in the God mind to give form to his creations is the cause of gravitation. Relaxation of that desire is a cause of radiation. Question. If God desires to create, why does he relax that desire? Answer. Because God's creative principle is based upon giving and re-giving. What he gives to his creations must be re-given to him for repeating his giving. Creation is like a light which is shown into a mirror and reflected back for repeating the reflection. The universal heartbeat is based upon that principle of action and rest from action for the purpose of repeating the action. The breathing of man or the universe expresses it fully. The electric current expresses it in its every cycle. Without action and rest from action, there could be no sequence, nor could there be cycles of life and death, nor the male and female of any creating thing. Question. You infer that death is re-giving. It seems to me that death is taking. Answer. No, there is not there is no taking in nature, for nature manifests God the giver of love. All of the pairs of opposites of God's creation give to each other. Neither one takes from the other in nature. Question. Can you give us a specific example? Answer. Yes. The, the earth gives an oak tree to the heavens. The heavens re-gives the oak tree to earth for re-giving. Earth does not take it. Man takes that which is not given and pays heavily for every breach of God's one law. Question. Can you give a specific example of what you mean by that? Answer. Yes. Man took slaves from Africa to enrich himself. The slaves did not give themselves to man. As a consequent, man has created a problem for himself which he may never solve without much bloodshed. All of man's empires were built by taking. The price has been high, for man has paid in blood and money very heavily. Question. Yesterday you spoke of long, low waves having less power than short, high waves which toss ships about like corks. Do waves gradually lose their power as they disappear toward stillness? If so, have they lost all power when they become absolutely still? Answer. Waves have no power in themselves, so they cannot lose what they do not have. All power lies in the stillness of the fulcrum from which the waves were extended. Waves express that power through motion, but the expression of power is not power. As waves lengthen and lower, they lose their ability to express power because the pistons of the pump which every wave is, becomes shorter as the wave lengthens. Question. Explain that idea further. Answer. Waves are pairs of oppositely unbalanced condition. Any disturbance of balance and rest in the universe is followed by a restoration of balance or rest. Throw a stone in the water and